Hi, my name is Dr. Obatma Shah, and today I want to talk to you about how you can increase AMH levels. What exactly is AMH? Well, it's the anti-malarian hormone. That is the hormone that is um, released by our ovaries that helps us to clue in to how many eggs there are left in the ovaries. So as you know, we're all born as women, <laughs> we're born with a certain number of eggs in our ovaries. And we only have that certain number. We actually start out with somewhere in the millions. <laughs> By the time we actually start to uh, become fertile, which means we're having a menstrual cycle, we're ovulating, by that time, we're actually down to about 100,000, maybe give or take. Um, and then over the course of our menstrual life, we are going to release an egg um, every single month. However, we actually develop more than one egg. So usually we're developing close to 15 or 20 eggs per cycle, and we release one egg per cycle. And then that one egg has a chance to become fertilized and lead to pregnancy if that's what we're wanting. So um, a lot of women come in with low ovarian reserves, which basically means that the number of eggs left in their ovaries is lower than one would like or lower for their age or um, just really low in terms of being able to go through a fertility cycle with IVF or something like that. So a lot of women ask me, can this be reversed? Well, the quick answer is yes and no. So yes, the AMH levels can be reversed, which basically means that the, the the number of eggs that are available in our ovaries can be increased um, and i'll tell you how exactly in a minute um, but it's important to realize that we're not actually increasing the number of eggs we were born with what we were born with and it's not going to change um, however what's changing is often the the availability of eggs that are in the ovaries. So I kind of envision it as there are eggs that are maybe taking a nap or hibernating in our ovaries and um, having the right inputs, and I'll talk about what those are, um, having the right inputs into um, supporting those eggs to become available actually makes for eggs which can then be um, developed and released and potentially fertilized. So um, what's really great about this is actually the things that will help to improve the number of eggs will also actually help to improve the quality of the eggs. So that's really great to know because you do want to have um, eggs that are useful, uh, not just being released, but you want them to be able to be fertilized. And really, we want them to be able to stay um, fertilized, turn into an embryo, and then eventually turn into a child in nine months. So this is really important. Egg quality is probably as important as the egg quantity. Um, but in this video, I just want to talk about the egg quantity. Um, so AMH, the anti-malarian hormone, that's the hormone that actually can help us have a sense of how many eggs there are left in the ovaries. Um, it's not an accurate science. So you can't give me an AMH number and I can tell you exactly how many eggs are left. This is, it's actually a relative number and it's really based on a general population of women that age. So it's, you know, give or take, um, it's not the only thing that you should look at. It's not the only number to worry about because at the end of the day, when you go to a reproductive endocrinologist, they're saying, oh, you have low ovarian reserve, so we can't do anything for you. Um, but if you have the ability to 
um, take a step back and say, okay, I have low ovarian reserve and here are the things that I'm going to do about it. Um, you might have a chance of increasing your ovarian reserve and then going into an IVF cycle or perhaps trying naturally, whichever route you choose, um, to really prepare yourself and be in a better place, um, for the egg retrieval if you're doing IVF or, um, actually I've had women <laughs> do this, um, before they do egg retrieval egg retrievals for egg freezing so you can use it in a lot of different ways um, but it's really important to realize that um, AMH is not off, as often Western medicine believes is not a only declining number that there's actually things that you can do to reverse that number um, so my top three things that I would do to reverse low ovarian reserve or increase the AMH levels is one, start with nutrition. So nutrition is really important to have exactly the, the types of nutrients that you need to um, help develop those eggs or help to even make those eggs available into something that can be developed. Um, so or, or actually, if you want to use it as like um, what I was saying, the analogy that I used before is to like wake up these eggs that you were born with, wake them up out of hibernation so that they can become usable. Um, so nutri nutrition is first. And often people will say, well, what's what is the, the few things that I need to take as a supplement? And it's not that simple, unfortunately. So the way that I practice, I really want to know exactly what each woman needs. And often those needs are very different. Um, so I can say overall, you could probably take a prenatal. You could take some B vitamins. Uh, magnesium is really important. Zinc is really important. But if you want to get really specific about what it is that your body needs, it's often a nutritional deficiency so you have to know what that deficiency is um, and the, there's an easy way to test it there's an amazing test that actually is um, a functional perspective of um, your nutritional levels in your body so it will tell you exactly um, which levels are low, how well you're using those nutrients, how well you're not using those nutrients. And then you can really support your body to have the exact nutrients that it is deficient in. So nutrition is step one. Um, the other two are actually hands-on therapies. Um, one is uh, called Mercier therapy. It's a fertility massage. Um, and I would describe it, I wouldn't quite describe it as a massage. It's a little bit more painful than that. Um, but it really gets into um, helping the right blood flow and circulation get to the eggs, get to the ovaries so that the eggs can develop and also helps the positioning of the uterus, which is um, if it's off, tilted one way or the other um, can really throw the ovaries out of whack. So that therapy is um, one of my favorites to help get blood flow and circulation locally to the uterus and ovaries. And then the other thing that I found really helpful is something called cold laser therapy. Uh, this is a therapy that comes out of Europe. Um, they've done lots of studies with it. Um, and I would say it's still kind of in the preliminary stages. So uh, I haven't gotten crazy with it, but I know that for women that need support with low, with increasing ovarian reserve or really with increasing egg quality because they've shown increased IVF success rates from doing a course of 10 to 12 treatments of this cold laser um, locally to the ovaries and uterus. So it's a it's basically a laser. It looks like a little gadget that I have in my office and we put it locally over the ovaries and then the uterus and the one that I ended up getting is actually um, is able to like determine the wavelength and the kind of um, type of frequency that is is introduced to your body so it's important to 
at least in my perspective, I really believe in individualized medicine, so I don't ever have a template for everybody. <laughs> um, but really like focusing in on what um, wavelength or what particular energies this laser needs to be on to affect the type of change that this person's ovaries needs. Um, so between those three things, the nutrition, Mercier therapy, and cold laser therapy, uh, we really have created kind of a, a template <laughs> um, for helping support women to reverse their ovarian reserve. And in a future video, I'll be talking about how to increase egg quality, uh, which is very different. Um, but as I said, some of the things that I mentioned here will actually also help egg quality. So with that, uh, I'm Dr. Ramat Masha, and I'll see you next time.